Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Hey yo man, it's your time. And fuck poverty. Get this money, man. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Phil and Lee Ready Judgmental Podcast. What's up, everybody? It's your full boy Phil back on here. And this is Lee Ready. So, what's going on, Phil? Nothing much, nothing much. Just chilling. Well, let me be the first to uh, 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 wish you and the rest of the fathers out there happy Juneteenth. How did you celebrate your Juneteenth today? <laughs> it's funny you say that because uh, it's not. Juneteenth that we celebrating over here. We celebrating Happy Father's Day. <laughs> so that's so that's what we want to hear. We don't want to hear Happy Juneteenth. Oh, Day. it's either or. Happy Juneteenth to you. How you celebrating your Juneteenth? It's funny today? because when I was young, I never even heard of Juneteenth, and they didn't teach us about this stuff or anything. <laughs> and then we want to scratch Father's Day and take this day. Why it couldn't be tomorrow or next week? Well, you got well. It is a, a day off. It's a it's a, a, a federal holiday, so it is tomorrow. Right, but what I'm saying is, when they did all of this, why did they have to put, make it the same as Father's Day? There's already <laughs> something going on for this day. Right. <laughs> so oh, yeah, we went you to, uh, go ahead. I'm gonna say we went we went to IHOP on in uh, Almore. It was pretty fast, too. The wait wasn't long. Everything was good. Only problem was it was two gnats and some flies hanging around that damn table. Mm-hmm. That makes you not even want to go back. <laughs> <laughs> Keep eating your food and, and flinging off bugs damn near half the time. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was a short uh, Philip food story. Uh, he haven't had one in a while, so he, he gave y'all a, a little, little short one. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's <laughs> let's get to it. Well, Philip, sir, Mama's boyfriend strikes again. Jeremiah Jones has been charged with capital murder and the death of his ex-girlfriend's nine-year-old daughter. Here's the report. 36 hours, at least four children have been shot in our area, two of them deadly. I, I, just heart-wrenching. Can't really even describe is. it any other way. The latest, a nine-year-old girl who may have been a victim of a domestic dispute. Fox 26's Nate Griffin is live in the Houston Heights with more. Nate, what have you learned on this one? Well, Melissa and Jose, good morning to you. Very sad story here. First of all, we just found out that the suspect, 22-year-old Jeremiah Jones, is going to be charged with capital murder. This is what we just found out. Authorities are actually seeking an arrest warrant for his capture as we speak. That is what we know. Let me unpack this story for you. Once again, very, very tragic. Happened around 10.30 last night here on Oxford Street off I-10, which is near the Heights. A mother and her three children, approximate ages one, three, and nine, were watching television in their apartment with a former boyfriend who was not happy about the previous breakup with the mom, shows up and makes entry into that apartment. They didn't have any children together, nor had they been married. Now, according to authorities, the mother who lives with a cousin was warned by that cousin. Suspect was at the apartment complex, but it was just a little too late. The unthinkable took place once Jones made entry. The family got separated. The suspect. Uh, don't don't this guy look just like Batista a little bit? <laughs> yep, that's what I was looking for. I was looking at. Suspect here um, executed a nine-year-old little girl in the apartment with a with a, uh, ha- a handgun. He then went after the uh, the mother, and she was shot also. However, she did survive the injuries, and she's at the hospital now. And I have interviewed her, um, but we we do have a person of interest we're looking for. Of course, uh, he's no longer here. Uh, we're looking for a, a, a man by the name of Jeremiah Jones. And once again, Jeremiah Jones is going to be charged with capital murder. Also, case, a cast rather, did give us a description and the type of car uh, that uh, he's driving. Suspects, a black male, out on bond for other crimes with guns, six feet tall, roughly 200 pounds, was wearing a black so, t-shirt. So, and- so they already laying a foundation at Mama, Mama Like the Thugs. So, yeah, she she liked the thugs. So hold on. 
Blue jeans and slides, driving a black 2019 Chevrolet Camaro. That's a black 2019 Chevrolet Camaro, tag number RTY0500. So that's the information that we have on the suspect at this time, and uh, he's going to be charged with capital murder. Of course, we'll continue to follow up, guys. We're live here in the Heights area. Nate Griffin, Fox 26 Morning News. Well, this next clip is going to have uh, the the boyfriend, the one that the cops are looking for, the ex-boyfriend, I'm sorry, the one the cops are looking for, he speaks to a news reporter. He's a thug, but yet he's sitting around doing interviews with a news reporter. This is the guy they're looking for? Yes. Oh, shit. I didn't see this one. And we begin with the Fox 26 exclusive. We're learning that a man who's wanted for allegedly shooting his ex-girlfriend and killing her nine-year-old daughter is claiming that he didn't do it. And Fox 26's Domley Keith spoke with him today. She joins us live from Northwest Houston at the apartment complex where the little girl was killed. Domley. Uh, oh. Domley, <laughs> Domley looks like uh, Deborah Cox, like older sister. Mm, I don't know who Deborah Cox's sister is. No, don't she look like her? Don't no, she look like Deborah no, Cox? She don't look not, like Deborah Cox to you? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> and why you laugh at her name? Because her name was Damali. The whole, uh, the whole presentation. <laughs> Yeah, the nine-year-old little girl was a member of HPD's PAL program, Police Activities League, and she was gunned down here inside her own apartment. The man who's now charged with her murder says he is innocent. Jeremiah, let me ask you, did you shoot your ex and her nine-year-old daughter? No, ma'am. As a manhunt is underway for 22-year-old... But, but they, the cops can't find him, but the reporter can. <laughs> I was about to say, how are you talking to him with the cops looking for him? <laughs> right. Jeremiah Jones, he spoke with me on Zoom, telling me he wasn't there at his ex-girlfriend's apartment and saying he did not do it. But why would his ex-girlfriend tell police he's the one who opened fire on her and her daughter? Honestly, ma'am, I really don't, I really don't know. I'm just trying to get all of this resolved. I'm trying to, because I was at a gas station on camera minutes before they say, with probably like 15 to 20 minutes before they even say, said that this happened. Houston police say it was just before 10 p.m. Monday when Jones's ex-girlfriend says he burst into her northwest Houston apartment. There was a short struggle and, sh and the kids stayed in the bedroom and she was out in the living room and before she was even shot he went directly to the bedroom and for the most part executed this nine-year-old girl. Jones's ex-girlfriend ended up shot in the shoulder and was rushed to the hospital where she's expected to survive. Her nine-year-old daughter was shot and killed. Houston Police Chief Troy Finner says, quote, this senseless act of domestic violence hits home for me and the HPD family. That sweet child was a member of our Police Activities League program. It just makes me really sad just knowing that, you know, the little girl didn't make it. People are just shooting people now and it's okay, and I'm not okay with that. It's honestly, it's heartbreaking to hear. I, I'm devastated. Meanwhile, Jones, who is out of jail on bond for several charges, says he and his attorney are in the process of retrieving store surveillance video that he says will prove he was about 20 miles away from his ex-girlfriend's apartment when she and her daughter were shot. He says he's gonna turn himself in. I have no reason to hide. I have no reason to hide. I'm, I'm gonna turn myself in. I just want my lawyer to get all the proper documents for me. Now, Houston police investigators say they are pulling surveillance video of their own from here at the apartment complex, and they believe it will show that Jones was here at the complex. Now, two other children were also home during the shooting. They were not injured. They're now with family members. Houston police chief Troy Finner is also urging Jeremiah Jones to turn himself in. Reporting live in Northwest Houston, I'm Domalee Key. So this woman has a one-year-old, a three-year-old, and a nine-year-old, and the ex-boyfriend that shot her is 22 years old. So she's got to be in her late 20s, early 30s. So in other words, she got messed with a young dude who's a, who's a, a, a damn thug. They've been going together for eight months, and they've broken up. They've been broken up for two months. So that means to tell me that the that the little baby was was like what a couple of months old before she put her 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 cat back on the street <laughs> like well well damn give your uterus your clitoris your cervix a damn rest and first of all first of all if you got three children and these are three little kids a nine-year-old 
a nine-year-old, a three-year-old, and a one-year-old. Can a nine-year-old wash themselves? They shouldn't. Okay, can a nine-year-old brush their teeth on their own without the mom having to check and all that stuff? Yeah. Okay, so, uh, of course, a nine-year-old can't iron her clothes and all that stuff to wear for school or whatever, right? I wouldn't think so. Okay, so so she has to wash three kids. She has to iron their clothes and cook for these three children. How do you have time for a man? You have to give that man attention, too. So how do you even have time for a man? True. I, I, yeah. I say if she if she has three kids like that, something is being neglected. And it definitely wasn't that man that was being neglected. She was neglecting them damn children. I, yeah. I don't understand. She Once she healed herself up, she need to go on a college tour on time management. Because how do you have time? <laughs> how do you even have but, time? Be, would you go ahead? But the whole story said, first off, she didn't care about her kids. And, and a lot of these uh, girls that do this type of stuff, stuff don't care about the kids. They only right. care about themselves. Because exactly. you shouldn't bring no dude around those kids like that. Exactly. Oh, and long rap sheet criminal with guns, you're going to bring him in and with you around your kids. Right. And the, the story don't make sense to me anyway. Because uh, if he's denying it and he's saying he got proof that he was 20 miles away and is on camera, you never heard a, a crook say stuff like that before. Like, a you know, a killer, they... They usually just hush up and just be on the water. It is what it is. Mm-hmm. And then why would he only shoot the nine-year-old, like, execution style, let the other kids live, and then only shoot the mom in the, in the shoulder? When right. You, at least if you was that mad, when you take the mom out, too, if not, then don't shoot her. Why, why are you shooting her in the shoulder? Mm-hmm. So just sound a little fishy to me. So I'll wait to see what the final outcome. Is. We got to stay on top of the story. Well, the next video is there. The news showing you that the guy has a lengthy uh, a criminal record and he's been out on bail and on bond and all that stuff. Hey, that's what they like, the bad boys. <laughs> I got into an argument with her over a cake. While Jeremiah Jones claims to Fox 26 he's innocent, he's got quite the rap sheet at just 22 years old. When he's 18 years old in 2018, you've got a page worth of criminal offenses in Harris County. The criminal justice system gave Jones break after break, but that didn't stop him from racking up new criminal charges while out on bond. He was even out on bond in Fort Bend County. Five days ago, he pled guilty to felony theft and was sentenced to 172 days. And then I see time served. Get this. The Fort Bend County DA's office tells us Jones served as 172 days while being in and out of the Harris County Jail and Fort Bend County Jail for bond violations. Instead of revoking his bond for felon in possession of a weapon, 338th Criminal District Court Judge Ramona Franklin just raised the bond amount higher. Jones bonded out yet again on June 1st. He's actually out on now three felony bonds because he's out on the burglary again. He's out on the felon in possession of a weapon, a gun, again. Now he's out on another felony evading arrest. How is that damn possible? Money. On Monday, police say Jones shot his ex-girlfriend and then shot and killed her nine-year-old daughter in the Heights. Before she was even shot, he went directly to the bedroom and for the most part executed this nine-year-old girl. We asked Jones if he's innocent, why did his ex-girlfriend say he shot the little girl? Honestly, ma'am, I really don't. I really don't know. I'm just trying to get all of this resolved. I'm trying to, because I was at a gas station on camera minutes before they say, with the probably like 15 to 20 minutes before they even say, said that this happened. Now she became the 175th victim of what I call the Harris County bond pandemic. The bottom line is none of this should have ever, ever happened. Yeah, he's he's right. It shouldn't be. Uh, shouldn't even got. You got three felonies and you out on bail for all three of them. That don't even make any sense. You don't. Well, the final clip we have the grandmama is going to speak. Grandmama who looks around about 48, 49. Here we go. Well, first tonight we are learning and we are hearing from the grandmother of a nine-year-old girl who was shot and killed Monday night. The girl's mom was also shot, 
but survived. Fox 26's Domily Keith joining us live from downtown Houston, where the mom's ex-boyfriend is now in jail. Charged yeah, you trying to tell me she don't look like Deborah Cox? No, she don't. <laughs> Kylie's murder. <laughs> Nothing like her. Yeah, yeah she do. <laughs> speaking out for the first time, even like her older sister. So, tragic no. night are now being released. It's just a hurtful process. At this time, man, yeah. we're I'm devastated. She's she's hurt, but yet she still woke up this morning and put those big old eyelashes on her face. In fact, Tracy Sorrell says her heart is broken after her daughter Brittany was shot in the shoulder and survived, and her granddaughter Kylie was shot in the head and killed. It's a nightmare. Not sleeping, not eating. The beautiful nine-year-old, as you can see here, loved basketball and goofing off. Brittany was watching a movie with her three children Monday night just before 10, and according to court records, her apartment door was unlocked for her cousin who lives with her. That's when she says her ex-boyfriend, Jeremiah Jones, came in, demanded his television, ripped it from the wall, and placed it near the front door. Court documents say Brittany handed over her cell phone after he ordered her to, and quote, he immediately walked back to the bedroom where Kylie was. Brittany heard two gunshots, saw Jones exit the bedroom, he shot her, then left the apartment. Before Jones was captured by HPD SWAT officers Tuesday evening, he told me he didn't do it. Because I was at a gas station on camera uh, minutes before they say, with probably like 15 to 20 minutes before they even say, said that this happened. Brittany's mom says her daughter is 100% sure it was him. She was looking at him, you know, I mean, they were talking and he got upset and, you know, couldn't take no for an answer. Jones, who was out on bond for several felony charges, dated Sorrels for eight months and they broke up two months ago. Her mom says Brittany secured a restraining order because she says Jones was constantly threatening her daughter. And according to court records, Jones went to Brittany's apartment just last week with a- Why is this guy threatening a nine-year-old? Yeah, something don't sound right. A gun and threatened to kill her. This grieving grandmother says she plans to fight- This is all this, uh, First of all, we gonna have to start charging these women. You, you shouldn't have no with with a damn one year old that you changing diapers and all that stuff. You shouldn't even have time for a man like this. Number one, number two, he has a criminal background. He's constantly threatening you, but you you have this man around your children. I don't get it. I, I don't, don't get sound, it. It just don't sound right. The story sounds like some bullshit. Like. Why is he stalking your nine-year-old? Why did he just shoot you in the shoulder? No, didn't shoot no other kid. Went to that kid room and shot that kid and killed him. Don't mm -hmm. sound right. You left your doors open for somebody to live there. So somebody lived there but don't the, have keys? The cousin, no. The cousin was uh was outside, probably smoking a cigarette or weed, one of the one of the two. And while uh -huh. the, the door was uh when the door was open, the guy must have snuck around and came in, and the cousin had seen him. When he had came in, the apartment is is uh it's an apartment, but it's uh floors, and okay. I guess the dude that's how not, that's it, not how that's not how they said it. Yeah, yeah, that's what the um the uh the report the uh you know the the print the uh, reader uh report said. Mm -hmm. See, the, the news don't really describe everything fully, and we'll we'll get to another story where the news didn't describe uh another report where the news didn't describe describe something uh, uh in detail. So he was outside probably smoking weed or a cigarette. The guy had gotten mm -hmm. the house. And I guess he, the cousin had seen him, like, turn around, see him go up there. And he must have had hollered that, you know, blankety blank is in here. And that's when all that stuff started. They, they make it seem like the door was un, un, unopened and he just walked in or whatever. But no, the, the mm -hmm. cousin was outside probably smoking a cigarette or some weed. So, or, or so, why, didn't they say the cousin, so why didn't they say the cousin said that he, he was there, too? Because they're only saying that the lady said that she's no. the only witness yeah, no, the cousin, uh, again, this is also in her printed out version, the uh, reader version, I'm sorry. The cousin did say he that was him in, in there. Like, blankly, blank, he had howled at her that, that he was in there, that he mm -hmm. was in the house. Yeah, so the, the cousin had uh, seen it, too. This is a male okay. cousin, a male cousin that lived, lived in the house with him. Is it her cousin, Blood? I, I don't know. Play. I don't know. Yeah, that my play cousin and all that stuff. Or and had a kid saying that's my cousin, but yeah, he rolling around mm -hmm. with the mom or something. Exactly. I don't, I don't know. And plus, it's the South too, and you know they get down with <laughs> 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 it. Texas shit.
for a law to be put into place in her granddaughter. They like cousins. What's that? Honor that would make the punishment for repeated threats carry the same weight as if they actually carried it out. Threats. She reports the threat. You're saying if there was a law in place that would crack down on even threats, she, right. her her daughter would have been saved. Your granddaughter would have exactly. been saved. Now, Jeremiah Jones is being held in jail without bond. When he appears in court on Tuesday, prosecutors are expected to ask a judge to keep it that way. Coming up in the 6 o'clock hour, we'll hear from a community activist who also spoke with Jeremiah Jones and who went to check out what he says will prove his innocence. Reporting live in downtown Houston, I'm Domalee Keith, Fox 26 News. Uh, I don't have that with the uh, community activist, but yeah, that's just a, well, regardless that it don't sound right, I believe that they need to charge these women with with uh, uh, at least a, a at least a manslaughter charge or something because you allow all this stuff, the ball is bullshit to happen, and you got three little babies at home, three little babies, mm -hmm. three little babies. One one of the babies is a, a little baby that you got to change diapers and all that stuff. I still don't understand. I would that's the thing I want to say to you to her. How you got time to find a man? You got time to t time to uh uh. Be around his man, and you have a one-year-old. They don't care about stuff like that. Should they be having a new boyfriend watching a one-year-old? Ain't even his. No. Nope. I'm gonna go to work. You watch my kid, type shit. Right. They they got together. The the damn kid was probably like three, four months years old. Mm -hmm. She put her like I said. She put her cat out on the street, and like you just had a baby, and you just ready to ready to put that cat out on the street when your ass should be in the damn house taking care of these kids. It should be something like uh, endangering the welfare of a minor, and they should, they should lose their young kids, something like that. Right? Yeah, that's 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 better. That's better than a manslaughter that I just said. Yeah, that's better. Endangering the welfare of a child because you did endanger him. You endangered mm -hmm. him by having this man in the house. Period. Regardless yep. if if he was if he shot her or not, you you got this man who's like I said, the mom got to be like twenty eight, twenty nine. He damn twenty two. What the hell can he do for you? Other other than pound you out, what can he really do for you? Uh -huh. The story just don't sound right. Why is he? Why did he just kill that one kid? Why was he threatening to kill that one kid? There got to be something there if that's the truth. Mm -hmm. Well, the next story we got a Detroit homeowner and legal gun owner Mayo Jackson kills armed suspect who came to his home. Here's the report. Dave. That's right, Tara and I had a chance to speak with that homeowner this evening. He says he's lived in that house for the past 20 years and eight years ago decided to buy a gun. Now he's taken some lessons on how to handle that firearm. And today those lessons were put into action. I had to do what I had to do to save my life. Meso Jackson awoke around 430 Tuesday morning to a man pounding on his door and yelling. Parts of the encounter captured on his ring doorbell camera at his home on Salem Street on Detroit's west side. Talking about somebody owe him some money or something. I say, ain't nobody owe you no money. Money. Um, I don't know what you talking about. Jackson. Damn, man. Leave, <laughs> leave, leave Mayo. <laughs> leave Mayo Jackson alone. Mr. Jackson, man, he just want to go to sleep. He want to watch some of his TV and be left alone. You coming at him with this shit. <laughs> says he tried to reason with the man from inside his house. He wouldn't he wouldn't leave, so I dialed 911. While he waited for police, he said things escalated from there. He went around the window back there, bust that window out. Fearing the destruction wouldn't stop, Jackson then armed himself. Came outside and said, man, you gotta leave. You can't be um you can't be doing this. You can't be doing this. So you gotta leave. So he had his he had his gun. He had he had reached for his gun, he pulled his gun out and I had to defend myself so I had to you know, I had to shoot him I did because of that firing four shots. They hit the man in the chest, killing him. It was me or him at that point. I didn't want to hurt nobody, but he, he just he just wouldn't quit. When police did arrive, Jackson says he followed their orders, led away in handcuffs for questioning. He, he, he was to kill me. That was a little, that was a little, that was a little sly remark that all cops ain't bad. <laughs> a lawful gun owner and also aware that police had an investigation to do. You know, I'm like shocked this guy would leave and right. he tried to kill me and so I didn't do nothing to the guy. You know, I'm like, yeah. that's a part that that, that was kind of sad. I'm Hopeful that the law would be on his side once police heard his story. You can't help but defend yourself. You ain't got no choice but to. And sharing his story with us, hoping that someone might take away a lesson or two from his encounter.
You gotta be on guard, you gotta be prepared. You can't just let people run you over, hurt you, and just get and don't and don't do nothing about it. You gotta defend yourself. And Detroit police did confirm they did take away Jackson for questioning and kept him in custody for several hours before releasing him without any charges. But ultimately, it will be up to the prosecutor's office after they review the entire case to decide where, what, if any, charges may come of all this. Reporting live tonight, Dave Spencer, Fox 2 News. Well, at this point, it does sound like the Castle Doctrine is on his side. Dave, did the homeowner say whether he recognized the suspect, if he knew the suspect? Yeah, I did have a chance to ask him that question. He says he did recognize him. He didn't know him. He said he'd seen him in the neighborhood before, was familiar with him, but had no relationship with him. Uh, it was obviously unclear from the from the pounding and the yelling that was going on what exactly this person was after. Obviously, uh, he did what he needed to do, in his opinion, to defend himself. We'll see what the prosecutor has to say. Dave, thank you. Oh, because if a man had the wrong address, somebody owed him money on that block. He just no, got the wrong so, damn house. No. Now, he saw the guy in the neighborhood mm -hmm. before, and he's, the guy's at the door yelling and carrying on. And as soon as I saw that, I thought, like, he probably owed that dude some money. And that dude let him leave until he get his money. But if you're going to kill somebody, it's best you kill him. That way, there's only one side of the story people got to hear. Now, we mm -hmm. don't know if they <laughs> each other, he owed him some money or what. Or we going to buy is what my man said. <laughs> he kept his ass in the house and just waited to do come in and kill him, too. Uh-huh. Damn, babe. Why may why Mayo Jackson gotta be lying? Why Mr. Jackson gotta be lying? Why Mr. Jackson uh is, Mr. Jackson could have been telling the truth? I didn't say he wasn't. I'm just saying. <laughs> you know what I mean? You never know. <laughs> I don't believe everybody right off the bat. Uh, uh, you should. Oh, shit. What was that guy saying? Why is his videos all distorted? Why we can't hear what my man's saying? Well, damn, it's an investigation. The police got all the video. All right. <laughs> Next one, we got a, uh, uh, we going, we staying in Michigan. This is Wilkesum, Wilkesum, Michigan. W Wilkesum is spelled W I X O M. I've never heard of it before. Michigan. Mm -hmm. 11, uh, oh, you heard of that before? No, I never heard of it. Uh, 11 year old fifth grader Jalen Stanley has his gaming bus broken into and his games were stolen. It, this is the report here that they uh, they don't tell the whole full story. It, here's the report. They had like took a bunch of stuff and it was like broken. 11 year old Jalen Staley explaining the ransacking of his level up with Jay gaming bus. His mom says the thieves got away with the inverter and power amplifier, which provides power to the entire bus. PlayStation 5 and Nintendo 64 games also stolen. Every single disc, every single um, 64 game that I had as a child growing up 20 years ago, all gone. Over a thousand games. Over a thousand games stolen. Over a thousand games. Some of that is a little bit priceless because they were from my childhood and then some are newer where we just purchased. We caught up with Jalen and his mom after the bus got some repairs. The business was all Jalen's idea. He and his mom take the bus all over Metro Detroit for parties and the like. They just got the Endeavor off the ground in March. We offer for not only gaming, but karaoke. And, and shout out to young, young Jalen. Uh, I think he graduated from the fifth grade uh, who had his ideal because I know they he, they cleaning up, especially in the summertime. And they just started they just started this business and summertime is up. They making a the killing every every uh, uh, weekend. Mm -hmm. um, and we also offer for private movie nights. They come on and we're like, come on in. And then they all load in and, they're, and their faces are like, and they're just scanning around and they're just like, they're looking everywhere. The lights at the games, just everywhere. So far, they've been able to raise money through Facebook, some $3,000, but they're still trying to replace all the games and cover the cost of the repairs for the bus. We need a total of $4,000 in order to like pay for everything. And that's not including what the labor was. That includes the equipment that we lost. They've got a few gigs this weekend. Donations and support from the community are helping. So they're going to keep on rolling. The fact someone would do this, though, is hard for them to swallow. And that's the thing is that we're all really struggling at this point. Gas and everything is so high that we're just trying to make a living and, you know, 
it just it just hurts that it happened to be my son's business. I was sad and I was mad and I kind of didn't really want to know what to think at the time. Yeah, yeah. And like, and I, and I just knew it was like, it was really sad for my mom and my Nana. Like some police tell Fox 2 they are now investigating. Hillary Wilston, Fox 2 News. Uh, well, they did a, like they said, they did a crowdfunding on, or a donation thing on Facebook and they reached their, uh, actually went over their Facebook, Facebook, uh, uh, goal. I forget what the goal was, but they, they went over it. Well, they, the news make it seem like, like the bus was like out on the street and somebody mm -hmm. had broke into it. Well, here's what really happened. <clears throat> Apparently. It all happened when a gate malfunction at 1-800-SELF-STORAGE in Wilson. Without customers being made aware, Stanley's mother, Brittany Stanley, was one to find out. It would be nice if they would only reimburse us for having our stuff stored, but also assist with some of the renovation calls that we have to make because they did not keep the gate closed, said Brittany Stanley. Nor did they call us and tell us that customers, that tell us customers, the gate malfunctioned. My thing is, why would you even have a crowdfunding? Because they, the one eight hundred self storage is responsible for all that stuff being mm -hmm. being stolen. Yeah, because the news double dipping. That's what that is. Yeah, exactly. The news made it seem like that the bus was like out on the street and some mm -hmm. somebody came and broke in and stole his stuff. No, the bus was in the storage, and they some the the gate is messed up on the storage, and they 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 got their stuff stolen. And the, the company never even told people that it was a, a gate malfunction and, and, you know, stuff stolen. I guess they walked in and it was like, well, damn, what happened? Well, they, they saying like they do a lot of parties and stuff like that and always out and about. So if that's the case, why is it in the storage? Uh, well, so it won't have to be on the street. You know how people had a stuff. And uh, just, just think of the storage as like a garage. They'll have yeah. the stuff in the garage. You, you think of it as more like a garage and not not a, a storage. And they, and they didn't trash the place. They didn't steal everything. So she don't need four thousand dollars to begin with. She can get everything that she had for less than way less than that. Mm. Uh, the first thing looking for a pocket change come up. Right. The first thing I do is damn get me a lawyer and sue that one eight hundred self storage. Yeah. For not telling people that they had a malfunction gate. They probably did, and they probably got reimbursed for what they lost, and now she's looking for an extra come up with that uh GoFundMe. Mm -hmm. Well, here's a, a story for y'all fathers out there. Uh, it's Father's Day, and we have a, a this is a story I had I had for a long time on my uh, flash drive, but I, f I always forget about it. South Carolina, we have Christopher Emanuel, whose uh, daughter daughter was a the mom had put the daughter up for adoption without his knowledge. And Damn, how did they do that? Well, well, why you ain't before I well, I'm not even gonna tell you. You'll just have to see the uh, video. Here here's the here's the report. Well, for many people, February is the month of love. It's a time we bring out the cards, candy, and make dinner reservations. For others, it's a uh, keep in mind that this is uh the South too, by the way. <laughs> that should answer your question. <laughs> 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 moment to simply be grateful for the people in our lives. But sometimes a love we never knew can bring us to greatest joy. I talked with the father who went to great lengths for the love of his family. I didn't no. know if she was safe. No. I didn't know if I would ever see her again. Christopher Emanuel is talking about his daughter, Skylar. You know, um, I always said I wanted to be a great dad. But his dreams of being a dad turned into a nightmare after his girlfriend placed their newborn daughter up for adoption without telling him. Um, I was lost, man. I was hurt. I was. So she just decided one day they didn't say how old was the kid was when she put, put the kid up. OK, but see, the kid looked kind of big there in those pictures. Oh, but no. uh, she she just said, you know what the hell? You know what? I'm putting this kid up for adoption. <laughs> That's because and, they don't give dads really no rights. So whatever the mom want to do, they allow it to happen. All right. That's messed up. All right views because I wanted to ensure that I could be there for my child. Christopher fought back, turning to the court system in Aiken County where Skyler was born. This is my opportunity to, to, to prove that and I was deprived of that. You know, my constitution and my state rights 
were violated. Under South Carolina law, unwed fathers can sign up on the Responsible Fatherhood Registry. It's an online database through DSS that lets the state know that you fathered a child. Pat Littlejohn is the president of the advocacy group South Carolina Center for Fathers and Families. Before uh, rights are terminated to allow an adoption to occur, um, attorneys um, as well as um, the Department of Social Services will check this registry. And if his name is on there, he must be notified. Christopher, you shouldn't even have to fill out no damn registry. Uh, what's what? up with the birth certificate? Mm -hmm. registered, adding the name of Skyler's mother, making it mandatory that he would be notified if she put the child up for adoption. And that's exactly what she did. Court documents show that Christopher added his name on the registry on February 4th. However, the adopted parents filed the motions on February 19th to adopt Skyler. Christopher was not added on that documentation as a biological father, even though he was listed as such on the registry. But under South Carolina law, someone living in another state can adopt a baby born here only under unusual or exceptional circumstances. Look, so you can adopt a kid like that if the children uh, is of mixed race heritage. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that I guess the kid is damaged if they're mixed. So they said, mm -hmm. look, we're going to get we're going to get rid of these kids. Is. Under the South Carolina Children's Code, a biracial child like Skyler fell under that category. Therefore, the adoption in part was able to go forward. My daughter was in San Diego, California with a prospective adoptive couples where her name was changed, where I have medical documentation calling my daughter another name, but she was never legally adopted. Christopher kept the faith and contested the adoption. Court records showed that his paternal rights were terminated without his permission. At one point, he and his lawyers were willing to adopt his own daughter back. After almost a year, a judge sided with him. Baby Skyler was sent back to South Carolina. So he had to go to, I, I just think they just do this stuff to just to try to juice, juice someone out of their money. Because it, mm -hmm. don't, it don't even make no sense from the jump. Like you had to wait a year. Because the judge could see this, and I'm like, well, look, he's the father. You didn't let him know that that you put the kid up for adoption. I'm going to get the kid back to the father. Exactly. Exactly. A year? That's ridiculous. Carolina, and the courts granted Christopher sole custody of his daughter. Aiken County, Judicial Center. This is where it went down at, man. But when I'm here being in this space, it fills me with joy. I feel safe because Aiken County brought my daughter home where she belongs. Well, as it relates to the adoption code, I spoke with State Senator Katrina Sheely. She says when the adoption code was originally written years ago, it was more of an issue with the public's willingness to adopt children of mixed race or children with disabilities. Now, the reason the out-of-state option for these children was added to the code was to give these children a better chance to find a forever home. She adds with changing times, this code probably needs to be reviewed and updated. Yeah, the, the code should have been updated years ago. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now I'm confused because was he with the girl? Did, did was his name on a birth certificate? They leave it out so much info detail. He, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I'm assuming that is he was. No his, way. There's no way a newborn child she can just put she can just terminate his uh his parental rights. He should have got a letter or something saying your rights been terminated way before she put the kid up for adoption. You right. know what I mean? Right. So there's a lot of holes in the story they leaving out. Don't sound right. Right. Well, uh, we're going to get into some sports. I want to ask you a question. Did you see the Deshaun Watson piece on Real Sports? No. <laughs> That's oh, not the one it. you sent me, was it? Yes. Okay. Yeah, no, I didn't, I didn't watch it. I'm going to watch it, but I didn't watch it. I just know uh, the story get crazier and crazier. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, okay, now the Golden State Warriors won on Thursday. Uh, so this is the, the uh, fourth champion for, uh, yeah, is it four time yeah. champion uh, yeah. for Steph Curry? All right, so he's yes. four time champion. So, where do you rank him as all time great? Um, I put him in top 20, maybe the back in the top 10. I'll, I'll, I'll even do better than that. I'll do top 15 
but he's probably at the back end of 10. You know what I mean? Probably 10, 11, somewhere back there, 12. Okay. He got the dude, the dude got a lot of awards, you know what I mean? And a lot of that stuff you just can't overpass. Four championships, two regular season, an anonymous MVP. Mm-hmm. He got a lot of he got a lot of stuff. I mean, he's not he is he, he, messed up because he's not he's a point guard, but he's really not. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, he's not. Like he, it's like it's like one of them. Go between ahead. like an Iverson type. Yeah, like that's Iverson just what I'm about type. to that's just what I'm about to yep. say. Yeah. So he's a guard that don't get a lot of assists, that don't mm-hmm. get steals. You don't you know what I mean? Only thing he do really is score and, and draw double teams, but right. that's all he really brings to the game. Right. Yeah, Allen Iverson is the is the uh the catalyst for having these these like hybrid point guards that they're small, mm-hmm. but they don't they don't do point guard. They're listed as point guards, but don't do point guard shit. So so what it is is it's a point guard all their career, all high school, college. They're a the point guard, and then when they get the pros, they say the hell with that. I want to shoot. Right. <laughs> Okay, now the second question is: Where do you rank Steve Kerr as a as a, a all time great coach? Now, okay, we all know this is Mark Jackson created this that made this team and anything, but Steve Kerr is still a four time NBA uh, uh, champion coaching wise. Now, I don't where do you? Him as one of the I don't know where he would rank yet because I don't look at him like that. Why? Shit, I could have coached Golden State with Kevin Durant on that team. Yeah, but Kevin Durant isn't on there now. Okay. Chick was uh just texting me the other day saying, man, I told you from the door Golden State was going to win. I said you did, but so many teams had injuries. Everybody in the playoffs this year was playing hurt except Golden State. They're the only ones that came with four strength. He's like, no, no, all these teams weren't hurt. I'm like, all right, man, I ain't even going to argue with you. <laughs> um, he's, I say he's a good coach. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't give him great. Okay, uh, and okay, your your team your team is looking for your NBA team is looking for a new coach, and you have anybody you can pick from anybody, uh, you know, of course that's living anybody that's that's out there. You want to pick Steve Kerr as one of your coaches, as a head coach? I'm sorry. Yeah, I would. Okay, but that don't mean he's a great coach because I'm picking him. I think he's a good coach. But just like uh, Kyrie was saying, with, with all them superstars together, they don't really need a coach. A, a, a lot of players feel that way. They just want to say it. And Kyrie came out and said it. Yeah, but that's not true. That's not true at all. Because look yeah. at look at uh, look at uh, the Lakers. Well, the Lakers had injuries and all this other shit going on besides just the coach problem. Yeah, but you still had Westbrook, and he wasn't doing shit. And he's supposed to be one of the best players in the NBA, right? That's what they said. Well, and that's why the co- and that's why that last coach got fired because he didn't make the adjustments to help Westbrook. You know what I mean? Uh, intertwine with the uh, team better. And that's that that takes back what Kyrie said. But you do you have to have a coach. The thing is, the thing is, everybody dogging Westbrook. But if you look at his numbers, like his percentages and stuff, it's all part of what he did the last couple of years. There ain't right. no big drop. You know what I mean? Right. So I, I wouldn't go as far as say 100% what, what Kyrie said, but it's more like a good 60, 70% true. Because coaches got to coaches gotta, uh, make your team do adjustments. They need you for that. But if you don't have to adjust, then he don't have to do the adjustments. They have to know when to uh, make the, you know, the, the, the substitution for them adjustment. And then like when the seconds on the clock, they have to draw up a play for that possession. But do off the game, they're not calling plays throughout the game. That's the players on the floor that's doing that. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times there's more on the players than the coach. I mean, of course, you do got to give the coach a lot of times because a lot of times when these teams go on these big ass runs and the coach don't know how to do shit about it, that's when it falls on the coach. Uh-huh. It's hard to the players. Okay. So, uh, like you sent, like you sent a text message. Uh, we, I want to give the Phillies a shout out. Uh, they won five straight. They lost uh, today. I think the, I think the score was five to four. They've been on a roll since uh, Phil and I went to the uh, Phillies game. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I think they only lost like twice. Uh, maybe this may be the third loss since then. 
The, it yeah, may be the third, I, though. It, I think it is twice. Yeah, Man, so they, they put on a hell of a win streak. Right. So I think their record is 36 wins, 32 losses. They're, they're still in the hunt, but the Braves has been playing good also. So we have to have one of them teams to fall off for us to be in contention for the playoffs. If they keep playing the way they play, we'll be all right. Yeah. Keep that starting to swing and shit. What we've been expecting from the door. Yep. So uh, on a TV, a movie front, anything you watched? Uh, not really. I just been uh, binge watching The Wire. I'm down to the uh, the last season now. Mm-hmm. And I think three three uh, episodes left. Because I never, what happened was when I went to Iraq, I never saw the last season because that came out around the same time. So I didn't yeah. get to see the last season. And then I kept saying, I want to see it. I want to see it. So Shay was like, yeah, we should, we can watch it. But I didn't just want to jump right into the last season. You know what I mean? Since it's been so many years, I wanted to get a refresher. So I just started from the first one and on. Right. So now in 2020, 22, how do you look at it now? I like the show. There's a lot of bullshit on the show. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Fucking cops making up fucking murderers and all this type of shit. Like, come on now. I mean, I know cops, cops playing evidence. But to change their voice on the phone and act like they call it a news, they talk too much to the to the, 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 the uh, media. And, and cops don't usually do that the way they've been doing on this show. Right. And then you got fucking uh, Omar. He jumped out of like a fucking five-story building. All he do is tear his ankle. That's it. He would have been laying on that ground all broke the fuck up. Meat <laughs> shot out in the <laughs> Superman. Yeah, yeah, they did make him superheroes. How about when he walked down the street and the drug dealers would just throw their drugs and stuff at him? Right. Oh, shit. Omar, come on. Oh, Omar. He looking down there. Here you go, Omar. You ain't even got to come in here. He's like, get the fuck out of here. But he got <laughs> Pretty much a, 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 a solo act. I mean, every now and then he might have a couple goons with him, but not really. And then right. you have two or three drug families that he terrorized. And nobody, like even with the co-op, y'all could have put a hit out on Omar with everybody. And everybody go out, fuck selling drugs. Everybody go out, find Omar, kill his people, anybody related to him until he show his face. But they just let him terrorize and run the streets. Right. Any Anything else? Just a wire? Um, naked and afraid. Uh huh. You know that's the show. Yeah. And how um, was that? Uh, is this is like XL, so they put like the uh, experts together. Mm-hmm. Some of them is doing forty days, and some of them is doing sixty days. So it was three girls. It was three girls together. The girl Amber, she's like a superstar beast. She fucking catch fish, catch alligators. She she do it all. And then you got Trish. She's an older lady. To talk shit that don't want to do nothing. And then you got the young girl. I forget the young girl name, but she's on the young girl only completed a, a 14 day challenge. Amber completed like 21 day challenges, 60 day challenge, 40 challenge. She done them all. She's been on multiple shows. And then Trish, I think Trish did a 21 day and that's it. Mm-hmm. But every but every day, Amber would be like, I'm going fishing, guys. And they'd be like, All right, we go, we go. She was like, uh, she go fishing, come back with all this fish. And she's like, you want to clean the fish? And then uh, the girl Trish, not, she'll be like, uh, nah, I don't, I don't feel like doing that right now. You know what I mean? And then other girl, the other girl's a follower, so she follow with Trish. So she don't want to do shit either. So the girl was like, all right. Or she'll say, like, can you start the fire? I'm going to go get some fish. And they'll be like, no, nah, I'm making my bed. It took these girls five days to make a bed. Their bed is comfortable. Then she said, she said, guys, I'm going out hunting and bringing back food and stuff. We need to start working on the shelter. Nah, we don't feel like shelter. We're going to build a door. You know what I mean? Building a door. They don't, they don't want to build it. She said, well, the rain is coming. I think we really should work on the, the, the shelter. Nah, we don't have to. How about the storm came in, rained on any ass. They bitching and freezing. Next day, okay, let's let's build, build the, uh, the shelter up. Like everything Amber says, the girl Trish be like, nah, I don't want to do that right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then the other girl back up. So, uh... And then another expert, this guy, his name Jeff, he came in and joined their squad. As soon as he came in, he teamed up with the two lazy girls that don't do shit. And he was like, yeah, wouldn't it be great? But he got sick. As soon as he got there, he was sick. He was sick for every day, just laying in the crib, throwing up shit and just fucked up. And uh, Trish would bring food back for him and everything. But whenever she come back, there's no water, there's no wood. They laying around, don't want to do nothing. You know what I mean? So she just And so Jeff tapped out. But before he left, he was like, 
yeah, it would be great if we just leave in the night and leave Amber here by herself. They'd be like, yeah, I'm down. I'll be with it. They was like whispering like that. And she had overheard them talking. I was like, that's fucked up. And she was like, you know what? I'm doing a lot for this team. And she did because she got them to build a raft. First, they built a dock so they can go further in the water and fish. But the dock was like a transformer type of dock. Like you can take it, the front part off, and then you got your raft for excursion when it's time to roll. The other girl was bitching about that because the way she said it, she said, we're going to roll every piece of wood that we roll down the hill. We're going to do it in order. This is what Amber was saying. Do it in order so as soon as we roll it down there, we connect it to where it needs to go. Mm-hmm. Then Trish was like, no, I want to get this big one out the way first. She's like, yeah, but if you do that, it's just going to be down there in the way because we're not at that part yet. She's like, well, that's what I'm doing. You know what I mean? And she just did it anyway. Like everything Amber said, Trish fought up against it. You know what I mean? So Trish has got to the point. She was like, at Jeff Tack, the other girls didn't leave yet. They was, so Amber was like, yeah, you know. I've been here long enough, and I think I just want to do the rest of the trip on my own, so I'm not going to take nothing with me. I'm just going to roll, and y'all can do your own thing. So she left, and then the girl was like, all right, bye. And when she gave her a hug, go bye, she, like, smiling in the camera like, good, you know what I mean? <laughs> no. So you got you to gotta see this episode. She was crazy. And now, right now, on the internet, they're, like, going back and forth. Amber ain't saying nothing, but Jeff and the other two girls were talking mad shit about her. So fans are talking shit about them, so now they blocking their social media because they was getting all these hate messages and shit. Mm-hmm. So after Amber left, she went down the road, found some guys, and she'd been hunting and fishing and, and thriving with those guys. So then the other girls was like, she's like, all right, we need to go fish. And then she was like, uh, yeah, we got this. We've been had this before, Amber. That's what they're saying. They went out there, tried to fish, couldn't catch shit. They're like, you know what? I think all the fish is going. This, this uh, fishing hole is dried up. Maybe tomorrow we can try something different. That shit ain't dry up. They just don't know what the fuck they're doing. So then they come out the next day, she makes a net. They catch one little fucking fish. They struggle to get that joint. They got happy shit. That's a win for us. This net. Yeah, I'm a genius with my net. That's what she's saying. They like Amber was bringing like four and five fish. She got like two alligators. Y'all get one fish in three days that y'all got to share. You call it a win. So after they ate that fish, the next day the girl was like, "We only got five days left. We need to like get some food, get ready to make this excursion out of here." The girl Trish laying on her ass like, "Yeah, no, I don't feel like doing nothing." So she's been doing that for like two days. So now the young girl getting mad. She's like, come on, Trish. She's like, she's like, I just can't do this by myself. It's like I'm carrying two people. Just it's just not right. You know what I mean? We're like, no shit. Then you know how Amber felt when y'all did that to her. <laughs> Trish like, yeah, no, I haven't had nothing to eat. The only way I'm getting up is if a chicken walk past our, our uh crib right now, you know what I mean? So she just laying there and the other girls crying, don't know what to do. I said, This shit is crazy. <laughs> Anything else? Nah, that's it. I ain't really been watching nothing. Well, uh, I looked at uh, Power of the Dog. Oh, my goodness. Now, that's the one that won all the awards, right? Yes. And this tells me, this showed me that never look at a movie without either reading the reviews or reading what it's about. Mm-hmm. Because because when I see a movie like a, a cowboy uh a western theme movie, the first thing mm-hmm. I'm thinking about is six shooters and yeah, saloons. Right, right. It's none of that shit. But <laughs> it's it's based in it's based in 1925. Uh Montana, I think it's Montana. So it's still like rural areas mm-hmm. and but but they still have like cars and stuff. And so we have okay. uh, a ben- Benjamin Cumberbunch, a.k.a. Dr. Strange, Kirsten Dunst, her husband, her real life husband, Jesse Plemons, and uh, Cody, Cody uh, McPhee, I think his name is. Uh, OK, so uh, Benjamin Cumberbunch and, and Jesse Plemons are, are brothers. Now, they have money because they have cattle and they uh, um they have cattle and they have employees and all that stuff. So they have, they have a business. So they have money. So, uh, well, it starts off that Benjamin Cumberbunch is like an asshole. An asshole to everybody. And um, he, uh, uh, they have went to a, a, a restaurant. Curse and Dunst restaurant. And uh, they were making fun of um uh, Kirsten Dunst's uh, son. Kirsten Dunst's son is is uh, effeminate, and so they were like making fun of him because he liked flowers and all that stuff. So they were making fun of him, and it got her mad. And um, 
it got her mad. So Benjamin Cumberbunch and the rest of the guys left, but but the brother stayed. The brother stayed in consoled a, a curse of dunce. So I guess he's thinking like, look, this is my chance. I can get in there. <laughs> <laughs> so they he came back home, and uh, so he started to talk to his brother like, why was you acting like that and all that stuff? Now keep in mind these guys are rich. They get right in bed with each other. Like he was like he walked in the room and he's like, well, why was you t- treating her like that and all that stuff? My man just <laughs> took his clothes off and they he they like slept slept in bed together like they was like broke or something. These are like damn thirty something year old men still sleeping in the bed with each other. <laughs> so uh so okay so Tom rolls down and uh uh the brother and Kirsten Dunst are together. They they together now. So and uh, Benjamin Cumberbunch was treating them like shit, and uh, he he they all made fun of the son, and they 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 would call the son the f word and all that stuff, and uh uh so she they got so they're so like uh uh scared of of um of Benjamin Cumberbunch that Kirsten Dunst starts drinking heavily. Now she's the type of drunk that will like hide hide alcohol in the in the bed, mm-hmm. alcohol in the closet and all that stuff. So nobody knew that she was a drunk other than uh the son knew because he used to see her bottles and and and, and stuff hitting around. Mm-hmm. So uh uh oh, so now <clears throat> now it comes to find out that uh they they uh Benjamin Cumberbunch had had took the horse and he had went and swam in a pond. So he went and swam in a pond and he was just chilling by himself. He takes a scarf. He takes a scarf and starts pleasuring himself. Oh, my goodness. And so uh, the son, the son was 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 there. The, and the son, uh, he didn't see the, uh, the the pleasuring himself part. But the son uh, uh, was like roaming around and they and he has like this little. Uh, well, it wasn't a tent. It was like a, a it, well, I guess it was like a tent made with like brushes and stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, so he walked inside the tent and it, it, he started looking and stuff. And it was a box, a, a, a box like in the ground. So he dug it up and it was all the uh, um, Benjamin Cumberbunch talks about his friend named Bronco. So he he d- digs the stuff up out of the box and he sees all Bronco's uh, gay sex books. <laughs> oh my! So, so the son put two and two together, like, okay, this dude, this dude is gay, or whatever. <laughs> so, uh, the, the son, when a dude, when he was swimming in the water, the son was like walking around. So Benjamin Cumberbunch chased him away. So now, now, as time goes by, Benjamin Cumberbunch starts to befriend the the uh, the the son. Now he's like teaching the son like uh, how to ride a horse and all that stuff. So, uh, so oh, and that's another thing. Uh, Benjamin Cumberbatch found out that Kirsten Dunst was drinking because she had hired, hired some uh, alcohol in like an alleyway or a walkway. I don't know what you would call it. And he looked in the window. He seen her like like she was drinking like that. So he had told the brother. The brother didn't uh, uh, didn't believe it. So uh, Benjamin Cumberbatch told the son. That, uh, you know, like I said, they had cattle, they had money. And he had told uh, Benjamin Cumberbunch that, yeah, any any this left, this left uh, hide, I just burn it. And so uh, it was these Native American people. They was like looking for some uh, some hide. And Kirsten Dunst had gave him the hide that they were going to burn. So, of course, you know, this sets Benjamin Cumberbunch off. And so the the son had to talk him down or whatever, and so he kind of he kind of agreed. So they had went out. The son and Benjamin Cumberbunch had went out, and uh, it was a, a a rabbit. He had cut himself on a, with the rabbit, and so they were still talking or whatever. So now they come back later, and his his hand is still bleeding. His hand is still tied up or whatever, and uh, he starts talking about Bronco to the gay guy. I mean, uh, to the son. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. And so he tells he tells the the son that, uh, yeah, Bronco saved my life. Uh, I almost died of hypothermia, and we we kept <laughs> he kept me warm by by holding <laughs> on against me. And so oh. the son said, uh, "Did you and Bronco have him on any clothes?" <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and Benjamin Coverbutt she just looked at him. And so uh what happened was the he got sick because of the the uh the 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 the, the, the rabbit cut him and infected him. I think it was a rabbit, I'm not sure. It infected him. So he he got sick and passed away. So that was the end of the movie. He passed away. Uh, did you like it? No. And I was like, <laughs> I'm I'm expecting like, okay, it's gonna be some cowboy shit coming on. And then about an hour left, I'm like, oh, ain't none of this shit going on. So I'm just gonna just go ahead and ride it out because I'm already halfway <laughs> through the movie anyway. Uh, for now on, when I see a movie like, oh, that looks interesting, I'm gonna have to read up on it. I'm not doing that shit no more. Well, I'm, I could have just to... go ahead. The one movie that won the Oscars, The Black Joan with the Gay Boy, I thought that was some gangster shit. And they ain't seen nowhere about gay in all the previews or nothing. Moonlight? Yeah, Moonlight. Mm-hmm. I get all ready, I'm like, all right, this about to be some gangster shit. And then I was like, well, what the hell did I got myself into? <laughs> you know, the, uh, they, they, that's who run Hollywood, so if they're giving it awards, you better watch out. Right. <laughs> And so I also watch a- Ambulance with Jake Gyllenhaal. And how do you pronounce the brother's name? Is it Yaya? Yaya uh, Abdul Mateen? I don't and, know. I know who you're talking uh, about. I don't know how you say that. And Elsa Gonzalez. This was another shitty movie, too, by the way. This is back to back shitty. I'm, surpri- movies I'm surprised you watched that because you don't usually get into movies like that. I got it well, in my queue. I just haven't watched it yet. Well, I seen the action. Of course, you know Michael Bay is directing this, so you know it's gonna have big action scenes and all that shit. But the logic, they just threw logic out the window. Okay, so <laughs> Jake Gyllenhaal, Jake Gyllenhaal, and uh I'm just gonna say the black guy. Uh no, no, I'll just call him Abdul. I'll just call him Abdul. Uh Jake Gyllenhaal and Abdul are brothers, brothers from another mother and father because Jake Gyllenhaal is white <laughs> and Abdul is black. So, uh, so he's a, a, um, I think he was a Marine veteran. So he's a Marine veteran that's struggling. Abdul is, he's a Marine veteran Mm -hmm. that's struggling. And his wife is, they just have a newborn baby and his wife has some type of condition where she needs uh, a surgery. They can't afford it. He he can't find a job. He, they doing all this, like this military dude that can't, he's like a decorated, uh, a military guy. Yeah. And he can't find a fucking job and all that stuff. Now, Sound like Jake, bullshit. Yes. Jake Gyllenhaal is like a master of a burglar, a, a, a mm-hmm. robber. So, you know, he has money and all this shit. So, so the wife had told Abdul to don't leave him alone. Don't bother him because, you know, he's bad news, you know, and all that type of stuff. So he goes over there and asks him for money. Now, like I told you, Jake Gyllenhaal is like a master of uh, robber and all this mm-hmm. stuff. Like so much so like the FBI, like know his name and all that shit, oh, but really? can't catch him. Yeah. This guy has like 15 cars in his damn garage. His damn brother is asking him for money and he wouldn't give it to him. He was like, well, look, uh, all my money is tied up in this little, little robbery we about to make. So, well, look, you a good driver. Uh, uh, won't you come in with us? So he's indecisive. Abdul is indecisive about it. Mistake number one. First of all, I'm not going to have anybody that's, uh, if we plan to do a robbery. I'm not going to have anybody that's indecisive. Well, I don't mm. know. Uh, mm-hmm. no, uh, and the thing is, you know, you, you know, your, uh, your, let's just call him his brother. You know, your brother's wife, your sister in law needs the surgery. If you didn't have the money, won't you say, well, like, here, look, I give you two of these cars and you just sell it. Right. I mean, he had a fleet of cars in his in his driveway and he wouldn't give him any money. So, mm-hmm. OK, the guy just finally goes on a robbery, a robber with him. One positive thing I can say about this movie, the bank robbery scene, that was a good scene when they robbed the bank. So they robbed a cop happened to be in the bank. The cop was trying to talk to to a bank teller. So he just happened to be in the bank in a in a bank by mistake. So the the a cop was about to shoot Jake Gyllenhaal, but Mateen had shot him. So so he's like you know uh, wounded or whatever. Mm-hmm. So they hijack the uh, ambulance, and this is where Elsa Gonzalez comes in. She's like treating him. She's like treating him them while they're like on a chase, like the cops are chasing them and everything. Mm-hmm. So here we got the cop, right? The cop 
one of the one of the cops, he's like a he might be like a detective or big or big. He's like one of the type of cops that just like plain clothes and he's mm-hmm. like telling people what to do or whatever. So uh, he has a dog with him because it, it, it was like his day off. He had a dog with him. So he was like, well, look, all right, well, look, I'm on the job. You know, take my dog home and all that, whatever. So the cop now they're chasing this, this, this. The, now the cops are driving like Dodge Chargers. And mm-hmm. they're driving the ambulance, and they can't catch this ambulance. <laughs> so More they put, bullshit. yeah. So they put everyone' lives in danger. They put everyone' lives in danger. The civilians, the people walking down the street. They put everyone' lives in danger. The cops stopped the uh, the cop. I told you the big guy stopped the uh, chase because the the cop that's cha- the cop that was chasing them was the partner of the cop that that they wounded. So, you know, he was like so gun ho about it, whatever. So the the big the big cop took, called it off. Why? Because the 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 cop who's uh who the partner, the partner, the the big cop's dog was in his car. So he was more he was more worried about the damn dog than the civilians that they, they were endangering. That's real life. <laughs> <laughs> so uh of course Elsa and and Abdul starts to befriend each other. You know, you don't have to do this. You can just get out of it and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. So uh your boy Wale is in it. Your boy Wale is, is is a damn bumbling uh uh he works with uh Jake Gyllenhaal. Mm-hmm. So they they got away. They hiding. So he tells he tells um uh, uh, Jake Jones Hall tells Wale to to uh, spray paint the car. Spray paint the car. Uh, you got forty seconds. And so he says. Uh, so they're going back and forth about it. This fool spray paints the wind the windshield of the car. Why would you spray paint the windshield of a car and you know we driving it? <laughs> so so he's like, man, not the windshield. And you know that was their little comic relief for the for the day. Uh. So and so they they got the money. They got the money from the bank robbery, but uh Jake Gyllenhaal had to pay these people like, well, look, I'll give you half of it if you help me out. So he had people to help him out. And the people had turned on him. So he had shot them. Jake Gyllenhaal and Abdul shot them. So they got away from them. And uh they're they're being they're still being chased. And uh they finally given up. And uh, Abdul is shot. Abdul is shot during when it when the uh, the people that turned on him, he got shot there. So he's like about to die, or whatever. So Jake mm-hmm. Gyllenhaal and them they gave up. And uh, Jake Gyllenhaal was about to shoot uh, Elsa Gonzalez, but Mateen shot shot him. So mm-hmm. uh, Jake Gyllenhaal dies, and uh, Abdul is they stopped in the hospital. So uh, first. First, the cops. Now he's like laying on the ground dying. The cops didn't want to didn't want to save him. So Elsa Gonzalez said, "No, I'm going to help him out," and went and helped him out, or whatever. So uh, okay, the 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 money was still. They still had money in the in the um uh, in the ambulance, and Abdul had told uh, Elsa that that uh you know my wife is sick, and I was just you doing this, you know, for my wife, or whatever. She takes some of the some of the money and gives it to the to the wife. And that's how the story ends. And I said, that's ridiculous because your 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 husband just is known for just robbing a robbing a bank. How are you gonna go and pay the surgery off with cash? They're gonna wonder where the cash come from. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it didn't make no sense to me, but uh well, like I said, back uh, Michael Bay uh, directed it, so you know it's going to be uh, big action scenes in it. So if you like action, I thought the robbery, the robbery scene was, was a good was a good view. But other than that, I waste my time on that one also. Well, I had it in my queue to watch it, but since you don't know how to give a just a little preview, you give a whole rundown of the whole movie. I guess I don't need to watch it. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, go ahead. You don't care. You'll still watch it anyway, right? You gotta learn how to do a preview and not the whole breakdown. God damn. <laughs> uh, but yeah, bad, bad uh film. Uh the regular the, the stuff on TV. Oh, they say that that show the old man. Uh I think mm-hmm. FX, they said that was that, that was, was so uh 
uh, our boy, uh, um, Chili, Chili Moody said, uh, it was, um, it was good. The, the, uh, yeah, I saw like the first 20 minutes of it. Mm-hmm. So I'm not, I'm not going to tell you what, what happened in the first 20 minutes. Well, all right, y'all. You can reach us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at PNL Judgmentals. Instagram at the two underscores judgmentals. Or you can email us at PNL Judgmentals at gmail.com. All right. Thank you, Philip, and enjoy your Father's Day. Did you, uh, y- uh you get the big, uh, chicken, right? The big chicken? Yeah, yeah, ain't you gonna get the big plate of chicken? That's what you get for Father's Day. Well, well, all right, yo. We, I can tell you're mad at me just by how right. your face look. You can Please. check the status on my level, not my Facebook. Comments on my photos, that's why I stay on the low low. Most of y'all is associates, so I be on my dolo. Hold up, whoa, whoa, hold the phone. You think all I do is rap? I can do it on my.